Hello, and welcome aboard to this episode of the We Are Reading One Piece podcast. This is a podcast dedicated to following the entire story of One Piece from beginning to end as we focus on one volume each episode. We keep the discussion spoiler free for new fans of the series, so this is the perfect place to follow along, whether you're new to the series or just want to revisit the world of One Piece with us. This week, we will be covering volume 35, Captain, which covers chapters 328 through 336. My name is Joel, and I'll be your host. Joining me today, we have Evan. Hello. And we have Cody. What's going on? Yeah, so we are now in Water 7. I know we've been looking forward to it. <laughs> I This volume is like why I love Water 7 so much. <laughs> yeah, oh we got God. a good one today. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to discuss yeah, so before we dive right in, uh, just a little recap for where we left off. After defeating Foxy, Luffy decided not to take any of his crew members, but their Jolly Roger. Before the excitement of the Davy Bat could settle down, the Straw Hats were confronted by one of the three Navy admirals, Aokiji. He said he wasn't looking for a fight and merely wanted to confirm Nika Robin's whereabouts. He ended up helping Tonji to reunite with his tribe by freezing the water using his chili chili fruit powers. After Tonji's departure, he changed his mind about the Straw Hats and decided it would be better to deal with them now before they became a bigger problem. He warned them about Robin, but Luffy declared he doesn't care about her past. He froze Robin, so Luffy ordered the rest of the crew to retreat. Luffy challenged Aokiji to a one-on-one -on -one fight, but was easily defeated. Aokiji honored the agreement and allowed the Straw Hats to leave. After thawing out, the crew found themselves at Shift Station, where they met Kokoro, Chimney, and Gombe, the cat, who was actually a rabbit. They saw a giant frog named uh, Yokozuna attempt to battle the sea train puffing Tom that travels from island to island over the tracks on the water. The frog is defeated, but Luffy admired his determination. Kokoro explains their next destination is Water 7, known for having the best shipbuilders in the world. If they were to find a carpenter for the crew, that would be the place. The crew arrived at Water 7 and managed to exchange their gold for 3 million berries. They split up with Luffy, Nami, and Usopp taking their money to the shipbuilders to meet the mayor and president of the Galaga Company, uh, Iceberg. Chopper and Robin going to explore and look at books, Sanji doing some grocery shopping, while Zoro stayed behind to guard the ship. While Chopper was in the shop, Robin was approached by a mysterious figure who whispered the, that they were with CP9 and disappeared with them. Zoro was attacked by the Frankie family bounty hunters and dismantlers, but he fended them off. They weren't done terrorizing the Straw Hats as they also attempted to steal their money at the shipyard. Luckily, one of the shipwrights, Polly, got the money back and reluctantly returned it with some convincing from his colleague, Luchi. They had another shipwright, Kaku, inspect the Mary to get an estimate for the repair, but returned with bad news. The Mary cannot be fixed and will never sail again. <sighs> what a cliffhanger. Sigh. <laughs> yeah, so we had a lot of different... Uh, People that were introduced to a lot of different like uh, multitasking like roles here, very talented people. Um, yeah, so there's a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, there's already so many different factions and characters, and and just how much he did with the setting in those first couple chapters. Like we talked about how beautiful Water Seven is. Yeah, yeah, really cool uh, set piece for uh, the current stage. All right, so let's get into the next part of the cover story before we get into the chapter. Gadatsu's Unexpected Life on the Blue Sea, Volume 13, The Sky Boss versus the Earth Boss. Gadatsu attacks a giant mole known as the Earth Boss with a jet punch. Did we see what the... Did the last one explain what the kanji on the Earth Boss's head means? I'm trying um... to remember now. I don't remember offhand. I don't either. I think they usually do. Right. But maybe it's not clear enough here. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what it says. I don't know. Might just be Earth. I don't know. It'll be, it'll be fun to figure <laughs> out. Yeah, that's a oh, good man. question. <laughs> and one I don't have the answer to, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, that's nice okay. reading. This giant mole shows up in the Gadas. It's like I'm gonna punch you in the face. I'm the boss. <laughs> <laughs> this town ain't big enough for the two of us. <laughs> Check out this dial power. 
Maybe you should dial it down a little bit. Jeez. Oh. <laughs> you just stay a little grounded nice. there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right let's uh let's move on to chapter 328 the pirate abduction incident sanji and chopper return to the mary report that robin is missing sanji witnessed robin with a masked figure but didn't see where they went over at dock one luffy shouts upon hearing the assessment that mary cannot be repaired offering them as much money as needed the shipwrights explain the keel is damaged which is the backbone of the ship Having to replace the keel would require dismantling the entire ship and essentially building it from scratch. Luffy demands that they rebuild the ship, but they further explain it would be the same and would be impossible to replicate completely. Luffy cannot accept what he's hearing and believes in the Mary. Iceberg says there is no point in discussing this any further and they can come back when, they have, when they're ready to buy a new ship. Corgi of the world government arrives, demands a private meeting with Iceberg. As Luffy and Nami prepare to leave, Luffy notices how light the two cases of money feel. They're both empty. Uh, Polly uh, thought he saw Kaku being carried off by the Frankie family earlier, but they figured out it was another person with a long nose. Usopp. Luffy takes off before Polly explains they can be found at the Frankie house by the shore. Nami rushes back to the Mary to drop off the remaining case of 100 million berries. But before she gets back to the ship, she comes across a severely battered Usopp. He blames himself for being so weak and letting the money be stolen. Nami tells him not to worry, they will get the money back. All right. I know so, I said uh, I love the way Oda draws people who've gotten the crap beaten out of them, but this was too much. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah but this one, this one was like hard to see. Yeah. 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 They really did a number on him. Yeah. Like he, he nose. looks dead. Yeah, and his nose like always broke. His nose is bent out of shape. <sighs> God, man. Great Nami chapter, though. Yeah. <laughs> like. Yeah, Nami has a lot of like really great expressions. Even just like in these two pages here, like when she finds Usopp, like she has like some mm-hmm. very expressive like faces, and like I, I really like the way that Oda conveys her emotions here. Yeah, huge range there, um, and I I love how um, when they find out, she doesn't mention the money at all. She's just like, we have to find Usopp. Yeah. Yep. That's huge. a rare moment for Nami. Yeah, that's so yeah. true. That's a good point. Don't always, worry about the money, Usopp. That that's something I would never think Nami would ever say. Right? <laughs> I think Nami and Usopp, I think, are like they have some of my favorite interactions among the crew, personally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah they're just they're always scared of stuff together. Like yeah. but they're both like kind of the smart ones at right. the same time. And it's just <laughs> they're fun. They're really fun. <laughs> Except for right now, it's really sad. Yeah, this, this is not one of those times, but <laughs> But like I, I like this reaction where um, Usopp says we're finally gonna be able to fix the Mary, and then Nami has like this shocked like look on her face, where she can't like you know this isn't the time to say like hey we can't fix the Mary. So like she kind of just has like that moment where she's like like she's like kind of shocked, but she has to kind of like brush it off for right now. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, priorities. The fact that like everybody saw like Usopp getting kidnapped, but they like that was like Kaku for some reason. But like the fact that he was being carried like, over his shoulder was like a red flag to them. They were just kind of like, "Oh, that's weird," and they just kind of like, went about their day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, it's it's so funny. Help. Yeah, I have thoughts on the whole Usopp being mistaken for Kaku thing, but I'll save that for later. In the <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, that's so good. It's so good. It really is. <laughs> Um, I love, so on the second page of this chapter, we see Zoro sitting awake on the ship, just chilling. I thought that was like Ooh. very uncharacteristic of Zoro to not be sleeping. I feel like he's pondering something. I feel like it shows how serious the situation is that Zoro's not sleeping. Yeah, I didn't pick up on yeah. that, but like you're you're 100% right on that. Yeah, I love that sequence just because... Just the fact that it's no speech, but it, there's so much gravitas there. Like, I love when Oda does that, but I didn't pick up on the fact that him being awake was such a big indicator. That's that's huge. <laughs> it's like, now's not a time yeah, to sleep. And then we kind of, with, like, I'm, I'm worried, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we kind of dive into the breakdown of what's wrong with the Mary, which is making me feel very unoptimistic about it, which is 
devastating, honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like when they explain it like this, it's, it's kind of like, good. yeah, yeah, it's it really, really puts good. puts things into context um, as to like why. But I don't know how like Kaku was able to see the keel, like because I would like he didn't True. go like, in the water. It's like how like where did he see it? Now I would assume that you I mean, can't see it from inside the ship, right? Maybe we also didn't see a lot of his, his no. inspection, though. Yeah, that's true. We just kind of saw him show up and his interaction with Zoro. Yeah, we mistook him for Usopp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just curious as like how he determined the keel was damaged. Uh, like, what, yeah, what was the inspection? Like, what was the process? Like, how did he check that? Yeah. Mm. Like. I, I, I don't know. Is it visible like from inside the ship? I'm not entirely sure. Like I thought it was like at the, like underneath. Probably. Like from I the would outside. Imagine it is. You should send this in to the SBS. Yeah, like twenty yeah, years. Right. Later. Oh, I found. A, <laughs> yeah, I found a mistake you made a while back. Explain yourself. Way back. <laughs> well, no, the answer would probably be like his heart told him that the keel was damaged, and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he, he's he could just sniff it uh, out. He's, he's he's so skilled as a shipwright, like he he just knows in his heart, and like that that's that's probably the answer we would get. <laughs> he's that good at his job. He can smell a broken keel a mile away. <laughs> that's what the nose is for. <laughs> that's why he's got such a long nose. It's even square like a keel. <laughs> we figured it out. <laughs> oh, Mr. <Holy>. Solved. <laughs> oh, no. his answer. Whoa! <laughs> he knew. <laughs> oh my god! But Kaku says that like, he's surprised that they were even able to get this far. He's like, I can't believe like the mm. ship even got here in this condition. So, like that just kind of like tells you like how bad of the condition the ship's in. Like they they couldn't tell because it seemed to be riding fine. But um, yeah, it seems like at, at this point, like they're on borrowed time. But yeah. it's also like so impressive that they have been able to get that far. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's a testament to Mary's ship building skills and yeah. Usopp's ship patching up skills. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like He's not Carpenter, but like. I don't know. Um, no, what was, was it the Mary's official or original builder? What was the name? Was it Mary? It was Mary. Yeah. The sheep. The sheep. Yeah, it was Mary. Yeah. It uh, did. Did Mary build the ship? Or acquired the ship at least. He he designed the ship. He designed. I know it. that much. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. That that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That definitely makes sense. Impressive. I love how um on this on these pages with um the uh, the explanation when Hattori the pigeon is explaining everything. <laughs> it's like in it's full like profile, too. you can't even see Luchi's face. It's just fully covered up. <laughs> Hand gestures and everything. Yeah. <sighs> so good. Yeah, so so yeah, like what, what Hotri is saying here is like the ship could be built like technically the same, but like no two pieces of wood are gonna be the same and like you would like feel like it was different. So even though if they technically built the same ship, they would be like, this isn't the Mary. So that's another thing as well. And like it might like the, the the like the size might be like just like slightly different, or there just might be a little difference here, like here and there. So they're gonna feel it the most, and it's probably gonna feel like alien to them. Feels like that, um, you know, the expression like you can never step in the same river twice. Yeah, makes sense. It feels it feels like that to a degree. Yeah, something that I really enjoyed about this chapter was um the development of uh iceberg and luffy's relationship yeah i think that he's being set up as like a really good contrast to luffy because you know he has that um that one panel where he says hey you call yourself the ship's captain and luffy mm -hmm. luffy's expression right after that oh my god he doesn't say anything yeah. he took that to heart yeah yeah, and then the Iceberg's just like, yep, yeah, this, this conversation's over. I have nothing more to say. Like, you can either accept reality or, like, you know, just, like, go somewhere else. Like, <laughs> I don't have another answer for you. That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
you can't make these decisions solely based on emotion. You have to like yeah. think about the long term safety and viability of your yeah. crew, which is yeah. Now that you mention comparing the two, I feel like I see a lot of similarities. Like they're both very important people with people under them in their command. And they're both also kind of childish. Yeah. <laughs> you know, in the know. same in the same sense, you know. But at the same time, they like know when to be serious. Right. Totally. Yeah. This is one of them. Young at, they're both young at heart. <laughs> <laughs> I mean Luffy is still young, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's something that uh, it didn't it didn't ring out to me as much my first time reading through this and like this through this whole volume I kept on thinking about like this moment with Luffy and Iceberg. Yeah. It'll, it'll, it'll be relevant. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And uh, I also like the, the next page where we see um, Peepley Lulu and <laughs> his bed head uh, moves from one side of his head to the other when he pushes pushes the hair in it just pops out on the other side. <laughs> the Iceberg like, like calls him out. Jesus, Lou, look at that, that bed head. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like his reaction like the next panel like when it pops out like, he's like Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> dang it sorry <laughs> and then next page <laughs> I just like oh it's hey it's corgi I'm not here today <laughs> <laughs> nice try <Yeah. laughs> oh, <buddy. laughs> yeah so um the Corgi seems kind of like a little bit of a sleaze bag, huh? Mm. He does. But also, like, kind of lazy. He doesn't... I smell pirates. Okay. I don't care. I just want to talk to this guy, you know? Yeah, it sounds like he's here on uh, some important business. Yeah, yeah. Standing next to Iceberg, he looks like the pirate. I mean, I guess he's got his suit mm. on, but... He's got, like, a little scar in his eye. Yeah. I guess it's not a little. It's kind of across his entire face. <laughs> And Iceberg tells him, I don't like you. Leave. Mm. <laughs> and Corgi says, you're acting like a child. Don't be so stubborn now. I do like these interactions between the uh, the different foremen and everything there. Yeah. We we're discussing it. You know, I don't know. I feel like we're getting some nice personality development for each of them. I think so, too. Actually, I'm curious. Evan, do you have any like favorites among these, like, the Galliola people or, like, these new characters we've seen so far? Ooh. I really like Kaku's character. Yeah, I like Kaku's character so far. Kaku too. Uh, I just like his ability a lot and his personality. Um, but yeah, they're all kind of fun and quirky, for sure. Kaku feels like capable to me. Like he, he seems like he's like he knows what he's doing. Um, Mm -hmm. he seems like kind of like pragmatic in certain ways. Um, but yeah, I, I think he's I think he's a likable character so far. I think they're all pretty likable. Like they all seem like really diligent craftsmen and very skilled at what they do. And they're all foremen, yeah. so they're all like, you know, kind of like the best at what they do. Which is cool. Mm-hmm. The best of the best. <laughs> In the city of the best of the best, you know? I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I also like Hotary. I think Hotary yeah. is pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> <Hotary's> pretty great. <laughs> I'm a I'm a big poly stan. Yeah, personally, <laughs> there's some really like callous but big brothery about him explaining yeah. everything to Nami, and I'm like, yeah, I like this guy. <laughs> I think he's a little too preachy, like telling Nami like how to dress and stuff. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's the that's the caveat there. I'm like, buddy, <laughs> it's like. The opposite. It's like Sanji's problem, but in the opposite direction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, he, he's looking, but for different reasons. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So, anything else on this chapter? Good. Oh, one thing, actually. Yeah. Does the mask being worn by somebody on the second page, like right above the whole sequence with Zoro, mm-hmm. did anyone else think, what's Foxy doing here? Oh, the... with the horns <laughs> with the horns yeah or like the, the nose headpiece and the nose yeah. i can see that he's here for revenge i know i was like wait 
Sean's gonna be pissed. <laughs> I, I... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I didn't, uh, I didn't pick up on that. I, guess uh, I didn't semblance. catch that. <laughs> like, their silhouette would probably be the same. Mm-hmm. That's my <laughs> last thing. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the next part of the cover story. Gadatsu's Unexpected Life on the Blue Sea, Volume 14. I unexpectedly brought him down. Gadatsu has defeated the Earth Boss. All right. Yeah. KO. Showed him who was boss. You think he would just cut holes in his elbows because <laughs> every time he uses the jet boost, he <laughs> rips a hole in his shirt. Yeah. Actually, that's a good point because last time he had a shirt, he did use the the jet punch against Chopper, and since he fell from the sky, I think he would have had a change of clothes unless Garo had something in his eyes already that looked exactly like what he was mm. wearing before. But he should have already had a hole in his jacket. That's true. Maybe, maybe he did. But I don't know if he did. I think, I think at that point, I would just make it an aesthetic decision. And cut <laughs> holes in my elbows. Yeah, I'm not I'm not 100% sure if he did or not. But unfortunately, oh. I, don't, yeah, I don't have the other volume handy to double check. But yeah, just something. Hear me out. Something, uh, yeah. <laughs> we send it to Oda. Yeah. <laughs> <yes, we ask. laughs> His answer is gonna be, oh, he he repaired. You got a the... burning question about Gadatsu. <laughs> he repaired the hole in his jacket with uh, his heart. Yeah, he was so so like. Um... <laughs> it's mantra. So so determined. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't have a good answer. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime Joel asks like a really good question, we're like, you know what? You know who'd yeah. be good to answer this question? <laughs> The main man himself. Let me, call, let me get him on the snail real quick. What would Oda say? <laughs> yeah. really All right. Point, Let's get a uh, Evan summary for the next chapter. Alrighty. Chapter three twenty nine. My name is Frankie. Nami decides not to move a battered and bruised Usopp and risk further injury, so she leaves him and rushes off to find Chopper. Back at the Berry Go, Zoro breaks the bad news to Sanji and Chopper regarding the fate of their ship. They're devastated, but they don't have time to mourn as Nami arrives. Cut to the Frankie house, where the thieves are celebrating their big heist. Their boss Frankie is excited to buy that thing he's always wanted and tells all his bros to celebrate. But the festivities are cut short as the front door explodes inward and from the smoke appears a single silhouette. It's Captain Usopp and he's come for revenge. He pleads with Frankie telling him the money is important for his crew to rebuild their ship. But Frankie is not moved and beats Usopp to a pulp as he makes his exit to spend the 200 million berries. Meanwhile, Nami guards the ship and the remaining 100 berries as Zoro, Sanji, and Chopper head into town to assist Usopp. Instead, they find a trail of blood. Then suddenly, a figure falls from the sky and bounces off the sidewalk. It's Luffy, who has less gracefully mimicked Kaku and is jumping from rooftop to rooftop in search of Usopp. Now reunited, the Straw Hats follow the trail of blood to the Frankie house, only to find Usopp in a heap and even more battered and bruised than before. Infuriated, the crew put on their game faces and head towards the Frankie house to avenge their fallen crewmate. I could just hear uh, the overtaken theme from the anime Mm -hmm. uh, kick in right here. (laughs) That's how you know it's about to go down. (laughs) Yeah, that last panel... Yeah. All them walking off. <laughs> yeah. They're pissed. Play the kick ass playlist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or no, the shot right before that when they're all literally like putting their game faces on. Like Zoro's got his putting his bandana on. Uh Choppers transformed. Yeah. Sanji's lighting a cigarette. <laughs> yep. Nobody's saying anything, just just making angry yeah. faces. So metal. Yeah, Luffy's cracking his knuckles. <laughs> yeah, does this uh, remind you guys of any other scene? Oh yeah. Mm. I think I think I think I'm picking up what you're putting down. Yeah, I'm getting uh sure. some Arlong Park vibes here. Oh yes, it's yes. Yeah. Uh, to me, yeah. it's like sa- same vibe. You yeah, know, to get ready to like roll up on the on their uh, enemies and like take them out. <laughs> yeah. Defending Usopp this time, and they're defending Nami uh, yeah. in Arlong. Yeah. 
except Usopp couldn't ask for help. And is he even conscious right now? No, he's Can he out. Even no. He's yeah, out. he doesn't even get to experience the fact that they're doing that for him. Yeah, and we were yeah. saying he looked bad before. Yeah. Now he looks dead. Yeah, deader. <laughs> yeah. I, I I I said the same thing in my, in my notes here. Like that, he like he's in even worse shape than he was before. Like he's completely unconscious. But the courage it took to show up, like I I kind of wasn't expecting it to be Usopp who kicked to bash the door in. Like, yeah. I wasn't sure it was going to be, and I was I was a little surprised that it was Usopp, and I was like, all right, let's go. Um, but we all know how that went. Yeah, I think he was just so motivated to try to save the Mary. Like that's how, yeah. like that's how much he cares about the ship, and like he feels very guilty as it is. But like he's not only letting his crew down, but he's also letting the Mary down. Mm-hmm. So he feels like he needs to go back in there and get the money back so they can save the Mary. So he thinks like without this money, like the Mary can't be saved. And it's gonna be my fault. So like, I I can't just sit by and not do anything about it. Yeah, he needs to be able to take that responsibility for for everybody there. Showing a lot of courage. It's just, I don't know, it, this fight gives me, like, the same feeling. Not the same, but a similar feeling to, like, Zora losing to Mihawk. As far yeah. as, like, just, like, falling short of, like, what you needed to be able to do in that moment. Like, that, that degree of failure. It just, mm. it hurts, man. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like this feels even more like a fool's errand, though, because he's going into, like, a house full of people. Where I think Zoro was legitimately like confident, like I can win this. Yeah, that's fair. I think he was yeah, blinded like, by rage. Like yeah. they 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 already beat him up, and pro- I think it was right. like probably less than two. His... Right. So now he's going yeah. to the stronghold with like the leader and like everybody. So it's even less likely that he's going to win here. But again, it's kind of like that motivation is just more. Like, I gotta put all that aside. Like this is like too important to me. Which is big for Us, the guy who's like usually scared, especially now yeah. that he knows these people have beaten the shit out of him before. Right. Yeah. And he wants to be a courageous warrior. This is definitely him being a courageous warrior. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In no way, it's a success. Bittersweet, but it's definitely a, yeah, definitely for his character. I think it's uh, a moment. Yeah. So I think we're getting these moments with like um, the Straw Hats, where they're kind of like contradicting um, what we would normally know about them, but in a way that's still completely in character. I'm not saying like, they're doing anything like out of character. It's just like contrary to like their normal behaviors, but like, because there's something that's so important, like they're acting like in these ways. So I think it's very interesting to see because again, like we're trying to know these characters so well at this point, like we know what they usually do in these cases. So they're doing something that's a little bit more unexpected. And I think it's like really compelling for the story. I completely agree. That's one of my favorite parts about yeah. water seven. Mm. I'm so glad Oda was able to like anticipate this tempo shift. Yeah, right. Because it's like we've been we've had these characters long enough where they we've like established their baseline, like who these people are. So now they can surprise us, you know. Because yeah, <laughs> I feel like we know the characters well enough for them to kind of have these uh, outlying moments. Like we we know their characters, so we know when they're acting out of character. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> But again, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't feel like they're being good. written in a way that's like, oh, that doesn't feel like the character. It's like, right? Oh, like, th- th- like this character. I could totally see this character doing this, making this decision. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. A character, some of the actions they take, and if you make those actions plausible, then it's a very polarizing moment. But then you're like, oh no, this is still that same character, and yeah. Oda's just so good at that. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, it's like I think it's also tough here too because like. Everybody's still mocking Usopp. Like Usopp shows there, and like he's just he's so determined to fight. And they're like, like I've never seen such a weakling before. Mm-hmm. And like they're all just like like making fun of him. Like oh, like if uh, this best if this is, like the kind of people that Luffy has on his crew, like wow, okay, like we don't have to worry about him. Especially this uh, this Frankie guy. That's uh, he seems like a piece of work. Yeah, I mean, this is like your first time seeing this, like, Frankie dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they don't give a whole lot away. Like, you see the mask and their hands, but that's pretty much it. Yeah. I guess you I guess you see a little bit more of them, but, like, 
it's kind of yeah, like I mean, you not, said, not too much. Just glimpses. It's mostly his um, his uh, gang picking on Usopp. He kind of it's like walks well past him and goes to spend all the money. Yeah, and uh, he seems cool to have mask, though. motivation too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to buy that thing, that thing he's always wanted. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that, that thing. Go get that thing. thing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they talk about kind of like they never had a chance to like uh like save up the money. Was that that was that in this chapter? Yeah, yeah, it's his talk yeah, to I the family so. right before. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, where he's like, uh yeah, we we always like get money and then we always spend it too fast. We never have a chance to, to get this stuff. So now we have like the money all at once. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do it. We're gonna do it. Now's the time. <laughs> <laughs> Which I feel like I don't know. I feel like we've all had moments in our life we can be, be like, yeah, I like you're like okay, this guy's this guy's a jerk to a degree, but I'm like, I see where you're coming from, man. <laughs> I've been there. I've been there. It's hard you to save money. Thing. If you want to help out your homies, like I <laughs> I don't agree with you, but like I see it, you know? Like I could save money or I could spend it. Hmm. <laughs> that is the other option. He's got big dreams. He wants to get a certain thing and do a certain action with that thing. <laughs> but he does seem pretty pretty cruel here. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. he even tells like, Gustav, like, don't defy me if you want to leave this town alive. And, like, he Very doesn't cool. care about like Gustav's pleas. And um, yeah, so he, he seems like pretty self-serving here in this case. Yeah. I like the character design too. Like the, the mask and the like cloak the stars it's kind of like gestury yeah. almost but mm. i get ready for that festival he's also massive yeah that's true <laughs> that's a good point i love the moment when Muffy makes his entrance into this chapter <laughs> <laughs> i think that 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 panel is so good it's so good i feel like i can see that i can see it i can hear it yeah I feel like it's it's really well drawn it's just a great <laughs> A great moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had that uh, noted here as well because I thought it was absolutely hilarious. Because like it's just like the so good. like you said, you can like totally see it playing out uh, because like it it's just like so visual, but like you can like hear like the bonk and like ah, and then it, <laughs> like even just falls around the water, <laughs> falls right into the water. Like it's like where such he a good surely drown to death if his crewmates weren't standing right there to watch the exactly. Whole thing happen. <laughs> like, which so is just, like, just so necessary. Yeah, yeah. And he's made of rubber, so he probably really does bounce like that. Yeah, <laughs> he's a particularly bouncy person. Yeah. <laughs> oh, a question for y'all. So there is the panel on the page after this gag with Luffy, where uh, they say maybe he blamed himself and went to confront the Frankie family all alone. Who do y'all think said that? Because we don't see who it's attached to. I think Sanji, um, but I'm I'm curious about. Um, I, I'm thinking Sanji as well, because it looks like Sanji is was... directly speaking to Luffy, and it's probably the same dialogue um, carried over to the next panel. Because like Zoro's already walking away, so I don't think he's yeah, like really engaged yes. in the conversation. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm thinking most likely Sanji. Okay, I, I wanted I want to make sure that I that that was I was going by the same process, and I wanted to double check because I feel like I don't know I think there's a lot of nice Sanji understanding Usopp moments as well. That's another mm. relationship I really like in the crew. Yeah, because I feel like Sanji is during like the least like sympathetic like to. Guys, mm -hmm. yeah, I was just gonna say or that. at least like outwardly, but I think Sanji does have these like moments like here and there, whereas like he really is kind of like like a softy, you know, he mm -hmm. he tries not to really show it, uh, especially when he's like, uh, like, is Nami and Robin okay? Like, <laughs> like, he doesn't ask anybody else if they're okay, but um, but, but, but I, I, think I got he does hurt care. too. <laughs> he's like, priorities, but <laughs> he still cares. <laughs> Yeah, it just stuck out to me that mm. particular moment. Yeah, very observant. Like Sanji in that moment being very observant, he actually 
did predict what had what had transpired. Yeah. yeah. Rogues, that's motivations. All right. Um, anything else on this one? No, let's fucking I love, go. <laughs> ready to I throw love down. the juxtaposition of noses between. There's the panel of Usopp, panel of Nami, panel of Kaku. It's like she's just right between like the two characters with the long noses. It just felt good for me. <laughs> me. That's what I got. That's my final thought. <laughs> Which page is this? The second page of the chapter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like it was Kaku's nose, same plane as Nami's tie, then the other part of Nami's tie, same plane as Usopp's nose. Oh. I don't know, just the OCD. Yeah, ties in the you, same like... shape as Usopp's nose. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Usopp. Uh, it's, it's, it's so funny, but it's like that. <sighs> yeah. Oh, my God. All right, so moving on to Gadatsu's Unexpected Life on the Blue Sea, Volume 15. I made it my slave and unexpectedly altered its helmet. Gadatsu is now the boss of the Earth Boss and made a space to ride in its helmet. Wow. How? <laughs> I got a lot of questions for Oda, this shit, this volume. It's particularly <laughs> in the Gadatsu arc. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, water something just cool scale seems to have changed as well. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really doesn't, big. Doesn't it looks way bigger here than before. Like the the bandage from like where Gadatsu punched him is bigger than Gadatsu's like entire like upper True. body. <laughs> it was a big punch. Oh, explain. <laughs> <laughs> I love that he just got like a little like room up in his helmet for people to chill. Yeah. How convenient. <laughs> Just kind of threw that together real quick. Yeah. Perfect. But yeah, I mean, they just kind of like beat up this this mole and they're like, all right, now you work for us. I was like, all right, fine, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Mm. King of the sky and king of the earth now. <laughs> yeah, I would think that if they were going to tell us what the, um, what the kanji meant on here, like we probably would have seen it here. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? This is a clear panel. I might be able to translate it right now. Ooh. Uh, according to Google Translate, it says number. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, mine also says number. Oda, why does the mole's helmet say number? <laughs> New SPS question. <laughs> what do you see mean? number? We're, we got a we got a list. We got a go rolling list for this. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure they'll they'll all be answered. Every single question we've asked will be answered. Eventually, I'm sure. <laughs> Honestly, so far, a lot of the conversations we've had have been yeah. answered in SBS. Yeah, that's mm. true. But yeah, I, I have no answer for this one. I don't know. Nope. Maybe it's the number of times we're asking questions about this cover story. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll probably oh, find out in two volumes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on. Chapter 330, it's decided. As the Frankie family blissfully parties, the Straw Hats roll up to the front door of the Frankie house. As one of the members is about to leave to get more supplies, he is blasted back through the front of the building. They recognize Straw Hat Luffy, but are not intimidated if they have weaklings like Usopp on the crew. Luffy makes his point as he blasts a hole in the iron armor of another member. They start to second guess themselves, but it becomes clear nobody's here to talk. The Strats overpower the Frankie family. Zombi tries to explain that Frankie already left with the money on the sea train and probably already spent it all on the black market. Luffy says it's not about the money anymore, and they should all prepare to have every bone in their bodies broken. The family, the Frankie family tries to fight back, but no match for the Straw Hats. Now sitting on the rubble where Frankie House used to be, Luffy decides they'll say farewell to the Mary. <sighs> This is action packed. Yeah. This is a throwdown. So great action panels. It's almost like each character gets their own page. Mm -hmm. A little time to shine. Which is rad. Actually, I, I, I really love um, the two pages that Zoro gets. Yeah. It very much gives, like, I feel like there's a lot of. Um, it feels a lot clearer as far as, like, the space taken up than Luffy's in particular. 
to a degree Sanji's and Chopper's, but just makes me think of like the fact that he's literally cutting steel in this panel and that state of mind he had to be in to like cut nothing but cut everything. Hmm. Yeah, so uh what he learned in Alabas seems to be coming in handy here. Yeah. Whereas Luffy's are so clever. style too. <laughs> Mm -hmm. He means business. Yeah, and, um, and three swords. <laughs> uh, on that note, this is the translation um, thing I wanted to point out. Is Ooh. he says uh, Santario, uh, Raven Hunt. So Santario means three sword style, but they they didn't translate it. So don't we hear oh, say three sword style in the in the U.S. version? interesting oh so yeah. we've had this translator um like on the series before it's a uh, megan bates um but i'm, I'm wondering if it's like maybe, maybe like a space issue or something because like the way the Could be. how small the panel is i just mm -hmm. thought it was odd that they left centurio like untranslated i don't know interesting I feel like oh, I such a great panel. You know, I give like a little like thing in the margins, like whenever they have done Santori in the in the in the series where they like said like three sword style right here. Yeah, I don't think they've ever like an asterisk. Yeah, but I don't yeah. think they've ever actually yeah. had Zoro say Santorio before. It's always been three sword style. Interesting. I didn't pick that up. But yeah, I Mr. Ratsu kind of like kicking butt here. For real, it's really nice seeing Chopper kicking some butt. I feel like it's been a minute. <laughs> Since we've seen <laughs> Chopper throw down. Yeah. Chopper's looking jacked. Yeah. <laughs> He's not even an arm point. Oh my god. Buddy. Yeah. <laughs> we see him fighting. It's all Sanji's um, cooking. Hor uh, horn mm. point as well. Which they yeah. also changed the um I just noticed this one too, is that they, they changed the, the term again. Where um the first time we saw Chopper, the um like Drum Kingdom, it was they like, use the term boost instead of point, but now they're back to boost, but they change it to point that uh, I think during Skypea. So it can be like guard point. Um, it's a uh, like you know, be guard boost here. It's like it should be like horn, horn point. I don't know, might just interesting. Yeah, I don't know, could be an oversight thing. <laughs> So, so could be an addition, like a printing edition thing, too. I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. All I know is Chopper did a cool, cool move. <laughs> so it's Sanji. And it's looking Zoro, so badass. So Luffy. Super badass. <laughs> the, uh, the colonnade rose. Yes. Or, yeah. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Just cutting off any hope of escape for these guys. <laughs> yeah. It's giving, uh, I'm not locked in here with you, you're locked in here with me vibes. <laughs> <laughs> then they then they get desperate and fire the everything cannon, which was hilarious. There's a potted cactus coming out of that cannon. And a watermelon. <laughs> everything but the kitchen sink. Pretty great. Oh, wait, nope, that's in there too. <laughs> oh. oh my god. No way. Yeah, it's pretty hilarious. Wait. Did Zoro cut the watermelon in two? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. I like love a it. Snake, a bowl, knives, a bomb. A skull. A skull. It might be on fire. <laughs> so good. A sea urchin. That's how. That's how I'm gonna move out of my apartment. <laughs> I'm just gonna load all my stuff into a cannon, point at an angle to Culver City, easy peasy. Bang. <laughs> I also just love um, near the start of this chapter the lighting on Luffy's face. It just really gives the we're not screwing around here. This is personal. This is not about the money, and yeah, I'm not gonna listen to anything you have to say. You're you're done. Mm -hmm. It is a pretty great moment where, like, they are underestimating Luffy, and Luffy just comes in and is just like, I'm just going to smash this guy's armor. And like, what are you, an idiot? Like, you know, that's like iron, right? And Luffy doesn't say anything, and he still just, like, attacks, like, the armor and just, like, destroys a giant hole in it. 
And then they're like, oh, okay, this guy means business. We uh, we got the wrong idea from this guy. Mm -hmm. The whole Iron Armor speech just felt so Don Krieg. It's like, dude. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Come on. Like, hey, uh, can we talk about this? And then it's like, uh, fire the cannons. Like, <laughs> All right, so that was not a serious suggestion, right? <laughs> Literally cuts this one guy off mid sentence. Oh, you're not getting the the berries back. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that like it's not about the berries. Yeah, it's personal. <laughs> it's personal. And then Luffy makes the decision to uh, stay for all of the Mary. Yeah, <sighs> it's a big yeah. decision. I'm like holding on for hope, but they just keep reiterating this fact and it's it's very sad it seems like it's actually going to happen mm -hmm. who knows i mean you know so i'm saying i'm staying optimistic i'm like i don't know something crazy something magical is going to happen and then mary's going <laughs> to be it's fixed, one piece but it's not yeah it's one piece i'm staying optimistic until you know that ship sinks yeah i mean we're not ship rights we're not experts but um we also believe in like like we want to believe like in the best in the series, right? Like this is a series about like hope and following your dreams and like right. I think I think those are messages that are like something to that are really important for the series. So we don't know how this is gonna play out here. Um mm -hmm. so we'll we'll just have to see. Uh but we don't have like all the information quite yet. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, and and you see it on every crewmate's face as they are getting this information. Like everyone's devastated when they hear this. And like the Mary, the Mary Go has definitely become like part of the crew. And like we were there yeah. when they all met the Mary Go for the first time and set sail, and they'll you know uh, spoke their hopes and dreams and set sail for the Grand Line. So it's like you know it's been cool seeing the ship go through the whole journey, and it's kind of crazy to say goodbye to it. But he said they're saying farewell right here. Yeah, Crazy. I mean, we only have the information that they have access to right now. So, like, based on the information that Luffy has, like, this is probably the most, like, logical decision. Um, so, you know, Luffy, like, he, he fought it, like, earlier against Iceberg. But now he's, like, I think he's had time to, like, process it and kind of, mm -hmm. like, like see, like, see a reason. It's like, okay, well, this is, like, the way it is. So, like, based on that information, we have to decide how can we like keep going on this journey like we can't stop here right. we have to we have to keep going so unfortunately there, there's He's not the really much else the they can do yeah so he has to make that decision yeah it's interesting to me that this decision comes specifically right after they destroy frankie house as revenge for them beating Usopp up yeah which to me makes me wonder if it's a if it's a combination of seeing the influence of Iceberg, this guy was like a huge leader in Water 7, who directly called out Luffy's own abilities as a leader, and then seeing one of his crewmates get completely messed up, and thinking, okay, well, you know, I've got to think long term. It's, it's my crew, is it my ship? Like, what sacrifices do I have to make? How do I make sure that the unit? It just feels like a really big development for him. Yeah, he's probably weighing like what's what's important here, like what, like you know, the crew is important to him, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. like, he has to do what's best for his crew, and maybe that's kind of like where he's coming from here. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think I think it's a good point, like seeing like how his crew is directly affected here, and like Usopp is beat up, and he has to like make this decision, and yeah, so it, it's definitely a tough one to make. But he made one. Yep. Got to move forward. Yeah, I um, I do love how they just completely destroyed the Frankie house, though. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like they, there is, like, nothing left standing here. <laughs> so sick. Yep. Like, it feels, like, so, so earned. <laughs> like they have I also love there. after seeing... Uh, Chopper has gone from like fight mode to like cute little Chopper fixing up Usopp in the next <laughs> page. Back so in doctor cute. mode. Yep. All right. Uh, anything else on this one? 
Yeah. All right, moving on. Kadatsu's Unexpected Life on the Blue Sea, Volume 16. Dig, dig, Earth Boss. Kadatsu and Garo have the Earth Boss start digging holes into the ground. Got big plans. <laughs> big money moves. Big mole moves. <laughs> big money mole. <laughs> big mole moves. <laughs> Yeah, so hopefully they'll uh, find what they're looking for. All right, let's move on. Uh, Evan's summary for the next chapter. Okie doke. Chapter 331, The Big Argument. At Galila Company Headquarters, Corgi and his bodyguards leave in a huff as Iceberg explains Corgi is after something he has. Behind Iceberg, there is a wanted poster for a young Nico Robin with a bounty of 79 million berries. Back on the merry-go, Usopp wakes up and apologizes for losing the money, but Luffy doesn't seem too concerned. Luffy then informs Usopp that they will be switching ships, which is not received well. Usopp does not trust the opinion of the shipwrights and believes Luffy is abandoning their ship. The rest of the crew try to calm down Luffy and Usopp, but the argument only intensifies. Eventually, Usopp grabs Luffy, and Luffy pins down Usopp. Sanji steps in, kicking Luffy away which seems to knock some sense into Luffy as he begins apologizing. Usopp doesn't waver, and he says he can't keep up with the crew's growing strength, and he's only becoming a burden. Usopp walks off the ship and says, I'm quitting this crew. Everyone is in shock when Usopp turns around and challenges Luffy, Luffy to a duel, stating, if I win, I'm taking the merry-go. Wow. Yo. This is so intense. This chapter did you, is so uh, Did you expect to see anything like this from, based on like what we've been seeing in the story? No. I, like every, every step of the way, I was expecting it to get resolved. I was expecting resolution. Like I was expecting them to come to terms, come to agreement, have an explanation. But it just kept escalating, escalating, escalating. And ends with him saying he's quitting the crew, which like was a, like felt like a stab to the heart, like for real. And uh, it's just after everything that happened, like everything that just transpired, you know, like yeah. them going in, seeking his revenge, like kicking a lot of ass for him and the amount of courage that he just showed to go in there. It was just like, like, I feel like they all had a growing moment together. And then it resulted in this like very unsatisfactory, unsatisfactory finale. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think like they're both pretty stubborn characters, right? And like, they both are very opinionated and stick to their opinions and stick to their guns. And so I can see it escalating like this. And like, Nami kind of says something in the next chapter that makes a lot of sense. And I think it's like the entire crew has already been given this information and it's had time to process it and has been mm -hmm. there through every step of the process and have seen Luffy come to his decision. Yeah. where Usopp's coming in at the very end, the decision's already made and everyone's okay with it. And so he's like, wait, what? And I feel like it just sends him off the edge because he's been taking care of the ship for ever. He's kept it afloat. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be sailing, but <laughs> Usopp has kept this thing above water and for them to just be like, yeah, we're switching ships and be casual about it, right? Because they've already made their decision. It's, they weren't asking him what he thought. Or right. how he felt. Mm -hmm. And so, like, yeah, it was like, I could see the whole thing unfurling, but it was like so painful to watch. And I'm just like, this was like one of the most intense chapters that we've had. This is the first time we've had like true conflict within the crew as well. Like, it was like, yeah, really intense. Like, they struck each other. They, they got into like a legitimate, not just like fucking around, but like actually like, aggressively got physical like Usopp grabs Luffy Luffy pins down Usopp Sanji steps in and kicks Luffy that was really intense I was like holy shit it's going there and then they got and then it was like past the point of no return at that point yeah and then Usopp turns around and challenges uh Luffy for the merry go I was like damn 
you know, after everything he's been through, he is like beaten to a pulp at this point, but he's still ready to fight the captain of his, the captain and his best friend. So it's like, whoa. After all that, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that he's, was a he lot. He still has fight, fighting spirit in him, yeah. Yeah, this is really intense. This is easily one of my favorite chapters in the entire series. And in my mind, some of Oda's best scene writing. Yeah. It definitely oh my God. was the first, like, a, for a lot of firsts. Like, it was a lot of the first time we're seeing a lot of this. And these two are genuinely angry at each other. It's like the first and this, inter- and- crew dispute. Mm-hmm. And Oda's been doing such a good job of just, like, laying the seeds of Usopp's entire struggle leading to this. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Like even going back to, like, Aokiji, he's like, oh, I just ran around a lot. Oh, we see this guy with a long nose who's really good at carpentry, and they like, oh, hey, Usopp. <laughs> Which is, like, yeah, hilarious, because uh... I was like, man, like, you <laughs> you don't respect my contributions enough to think that I'm this other guy? <laughs> Right. Like, damn, dude, you know? Yeah, that's a and great on point. The way, like, not being yeah, recognized. I'm... And then getting beaten up and, like, actually losing all this money for the crew. Like, he feels mm-hmm. obviously guilty about that. And, like, if he was, like, if I was stronger, we would have kept this money. And we wouldn't yeah. be in this whole situation that we're in right now if I was a little stronger. Um, so, yeah, like you said, Oda really did plant all the seeds to, like, make this feel as heavy as it was. Like, it was a very heavy moment. And uh, we know it was heavy because of, like you said, all the seeds that like validated all those, all those feelings and all that, all those moments in this outburst. Yeah, and even when they were traveling to Water Seven, like Usopp was hugging the mast of the ship. Yeah, you know, and like this is the ship that was given to him by his childhood friend. So like, there's, I think there's that extra life for Usopp where there's like, more of that sentimental value too, because like how he even got the ship. That's um, true. He knew so, yeah, Mary personally. Yeah. Yeah. So Kai and Mary were like people he, he knew and like them get, giving the ship to them like meant that much. Um, yeah. Kai so gave up, them the ship. Yeah, That's Usopp right. takes it very personally. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's been taking care of it this whole time. Yeah. Which is so funny to me. Oof. Not funny, like tragically funny. Mm. Because almost any other time when. Like, thinking Skype here, they're like, Usopp, you can fix this, right? Every time Usopp says, I'm not a carpenter. Yeah. I'm not a carpenter. This is not my job. This is the one time mm-hmm. where he says, oh, I'll fix it. I can do a good job. And Luffy has to tell him, Usopp, you are not a carpenter. Yeah. That's a good point. Tragic yeah. irony. Yeah. So good. Like, I, oh yeah. my god, I love this. Yeah, I'll just fix so it like, like I always do. No problem. Hey guys, lend me a hand. <laughs> right, it's gone yeah. this far. It's worked so far. Yeah. But he he's willing to like do a whole 180 on this stance he's taken every time if it means one, saving the ship from the person who mattered to him so well, and feeling like he can contribute to this crew. Cause he feels like he's useless. Yeah. Sorry, I just and on the, I on the panel about this, this whole this whole struggle between them. No, <laughs> I'm with you, dude. This was like an emotional roller coaster, this whole chapter. And like even the panel where he says, I'm quitting this crew, they show the jolly, which he made. Because he made the jolly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, Usopp has contributed a lot to the Straw Hats that like isn't just oh let me like win this fight. Like he's contributed a lot to like the heart of the Straw Hats. And like yeah. you know, just like the Mary itself, and like the, the journey, like so Usopp does a lot, like in that regard. But I feel like he's not really seeing that part of like his contributions. Like he's just seeing his like shortcomings. And like Usopp even like says that like he he accuses Luffy of like leaving useless crewmates behind. And that's what he's like. I if um if you can just discard crewmates, fine. I'll I'll just leave. You don't need me. So uh, yeah. right, because so, he was he was considering the ship like a crewmate, which is yeah, yeah. Which, yeah. which feels right like that feels so true despite yeah. the fact that they just like went and you know took down the frankie house after they like you know beat up Usopp. but like you know like like i was saying like he wasn't really conscious for that he wasn't really present he was not really aware of that but i also don't think that that matters like i don't think it overrides like 
his feelings in this in this case where he feels like he is kind of being discarded like like, like I, I think mm-hmm. it might even kind of confirm it's like oh you had to come in and like save me and defend me like I, i'm useless i'm not contributing so i'm just like a burden to you guys might as well just you know take the burden off of you guys and I'll, I'll just leave i'll make it easier for you it's a really good point yeah and he even says he even says i'm serious i've been thinking about this for a long time now and i was like oh yeah. oh my god he is serious as someone <laughs> who had the lowest self-esteem as a middle schooler and read this chapter in like seventh grade Oda did such, it's just such a great job, like, example of, like, how insecurity can erode your trust in the people that care about you. Yeah. Yeah, you can kind of project and, like, fill in the blanks. Because you, you don't you don't know how other people are perceiving you. So sometimes, like, mm-hmm. like, you might be thinking something worse than what other people are thinking. And then, like, you, you take that on to be, like, reality. Because you get so used to thinking that way, that becomes, like, your reality. And you think, uh, like... They must be thinking that. So, Usopp's probably in that same boat. Yeah. No pun intended. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> Cody has left the podcast. <laughs> God. Oh my god. That was great. That was great. Yeah, was... I don't know if that's useful, but like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. What do y'all think of Luffy's perspective on this? Um is this the chapter where Zoro says where Zoro like tells him not to second guess himself? Mm. Yeah, it's next chapter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I won't go into it then. Zoro, like, specifically doesn't say anything. We just get, like, a bunch of, like, elli- ellipses for him. Yeah. Yeah. He's been very stoic in this volume. I feel like he's been more passive than usual. More than I kind of feel like that's... Like the, the... No, go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I just kind of feel like that's... Zoro is typically one to not lift a finger more than he has to unless the moment arises where he has to step in and intervene. I think he's really good about recognizing those moments. Um, yeah. So, like, you know, when he stopped, he stepped in to like save Robin, or when the chopper was crying about like not wanting to like be taken to Foxy's crew, um, Zoro kind of stepped in and was like, no, like you have to accept like this is what happened. So, I think sometimes Zoro can be like a realist, but like he's not going to always just come in and offer his opinion until like it's kind of like he feels like he can really provide something useful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a realist and a loyalist to to Luffy. Like, whatever Luffy's yeah. saying or doing, he will back up 100% without blinking an eye. He's got Luffy's back. Mm-hmm. Like, in this case, like, he really doesn't show much emotion. He just stands by Luffy the whole time. Because I, I think he, I think that's kind of like um, trusting and letting the, them have their own agency. Because, like, he's mm-hmm. going to be like, let people do what they do. Like, the, like, they can make their own decisions. So I feel like Zoro's not going to like be like, no, don't go. Like, you know, you should stay. He's going to be like, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. Like, like not fine either way. So he, he's very much about like when people make their own decisions for themselves. Whereas like Sanji wrong. here, um, because like, kind of going back to, to Cody's question um, about like, how's Luffy feel? Like Luffy's definitely like heated. Like, um, like Cody mentioned before as well. Um, Luffy's had more time to process this information. The rest of the crew has more time to process than Usopp. But like Usopp is um, very heated. His emotions are rising. And I think Luffy's kind of like meeting him as well. He's like, you think I don't know like like I like how I feel? Like I know exactly what, like how you feel. Like I, I felt the same thing too. But like, you know, this is how we have to handle it. But right. then Luffy gets like so heated where he's about to say, like, presumably, like, why don't you just take the opportunity to like leave the crew? The Sanji like stops him like mid sentence, be like, "Yo, idiot! Like, stop and think about it before you say something you're gonna regret." And then, um, like Luffy's like, "You're right, sorry. Like, I was like, I was like losing my my cool. Like, that's not what I meant." And then Usopp takes the right person. Is like, "No, I know exactly what you meant." So he's like, "You know what? Fine. I'll, I'll do you the favor. I'll I'll leave. If that's how you really feel." So like this, the whole way this plays out, I think it's like beat for beat. It's like. 
it's just like really well done conveying his emotions and getting the points across and you can like really see like where they're coming from and like how like everybody's feeling and it's just like such like raw emotion and we haven't seen the crew like turn each other like this like to this degree like uh like i think the closest we've probably seen was like maybe like vivi and alabasta where like, luffy had like a like a brief skirmish with like vv just it wasn't like that serious whereas like they just had like a little like exchange of blows it felt like more like brother and sister kind of thing but this feels like mm. if it if it get if it got to the point where like they're physically attacking each other like we haven't seen them like get to this level before it just hurts it hurts it hurts <laughs> 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 Yeah, how about you, Cody? Like, what do you, what do you think about Luffy's uh, like thoughts here? It, I know, it just seems to go further into that whole. I mean, so I guess my journey with this volume was like starting to see it from Luffy's perspective because I had focused so much on Usopp's perspective whenever I yeah. would revisit this fight. Um, and to me, it makes me think of again that whole thing with Iceberg, that whole thing with Luffy's burden as the captain on yeah. making this decision. Right. And being a person who is so good at reading others' emotions, probably understanding that Usopp would be someone who would take it hard. Yeah. But Luffy mm -hmm. has legit... Like he says, I've been looking at ships to replace her, replace her. We can figure out a secondhand one. It can be even bigger if it costs us this much. Like it's like you were saying, like we're seeing all these different sides of these characters. This is Luffy like taking time researching something. <laughs> that, that's a lot of character yeah yeah <laughs> he's yeah. trying so hard to like be a good leader and like make the best of this terrible decision he's been put into and what and what i think he sees in iceberg and this is something that uh i think he even comments on later is the fact that people around him trust him and yeah. that he has been able to like unite these people who who or that that iceberg was able to unite these different companies who were feuding with each other which makes it even more tragic that in his effort to get us through through, through such a tough situation it ends up creating the biggest division we have ever seen yeah and the moment where it explodes into violence it's not that usopp is saying luffy is wrong this whole chapter, Usopp keeps saying, Luffy, no, you're wrong. Oh, you're going to listen to a bunch of shipwrights? Oh, that's not it. Oh, I can fix it. I can fix it. But if to Luffy's, it's, I, I need to find the specific page. Um, it's when Usopp says, you were just pretending to care about Mary. Luffy doesn't care if you call him wrong. But if you say he doesn't care, that's completely different. Yeah. Because that's Luffy's job. And that just... Yeah. Makes his chat twice as painful, man. God. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, those, those okay, are really good points. Yeah, and, that um, was like that was like the moment where the argument like passed the point and no return. It's just it's because even his final words was like, "You don't like my way of doing things." Before Sanji cut him off. Mm -hmm. Good on Sanji. Yeah. Yeah. No, for real. Yeah. He's the compassion. And Luffy one, like, realized too, like. Luffy re did realize he's like, yeah, any week we started to rebuff what he was saying. So, oh, that was intense. That was mm -hmm. such an intense chapter. Yeah, I think there's there's just like so much to unpack here and to dissect. Um, but I, I think we've we've gone over, um, like the the main main points of of the chapter. I think we should move on to I... the next one if we're all good here. Mm -hmm. You're right. We could talk about this forever. <laughs> yeah, like it, it's very easy to get kind of get lost. It's so something. good. Yeah, there's so there's good. so much to unpack. Like it's so uh, well done. Yeah. It's so well done. <laughs> yeah, I've I've yeah. said what I had to say, and okay. it's my best of my emotions. If I if I don't say any more, then <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I mean, it oh, just actually, continues in the next chapter. <laughs> uh, before we we it's actually uh, <laughs> before we do a movie ahead, I actually did want to mention. Um, at the beginning of the, the chapter, Corgi uh, left upset after meeting with Iceberg. So we saw that they tried to meet. Um, 
But yeah, it seemed like he didn't get what he was looking for from Iceberg. Right. But he is hiding yeah. something. He is hiding possibly. something. Possibly. Quite possibly. And then I also wanted to note that Iceberg has Nico Robbins' Monty poster on his wall. Sure does. So he, he seems to he seems to be like to know who Nico Robin is, and he's on. I'm um, she's on his radar for some reason. She looks very young in the photo as well. Yeah, yeah. So that's when uh, yeah, she was younger because we know she's had a bounty on her since she was eight. Yep. So hell of a bounty um, for an eight year old. <laughs> And Robin is still missing after, like, through all this too. Robin is still MIA. We don't know what happened to Robin. MIA. It's like almost as much as part, man. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, just wanted to, to mention those those points as well. It's falling apart just like the ship. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll <laughs> all see all myself. All I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Let's go to the next chapter, please. <laughs> yeah, so uh, let's let's uh, change gears to Gadatsu's Unexpected Life on the Blue Sea, Volume 17. We hit pay dirt. Hurrah! The digging pays off as they struck water. They could be mm, drinking good together. tonight. <laughs> or bathing well. <laughs> That's so silly. <laughs> Yeah, so they're excited. They hit water. Um, That's great. Seems to be what they're looking for. Yeah, team photo. Right. <laughs> team photo. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, so after the old detour, let's get back to the the main chapter, chapter three hundred thirty-two. Luffy versus Usopp. Nami tries to convince Luffy to back out of the fight and apologize, but Luffy says it's too late to back out now and to leave him alone. Nami tells Zoro and Usopp to stop bickering as there's enough fighting among the crew. Chopper returns, dejected. He tried to treat Usopp's wounds, but Usopp told him to leave since they were no longer crewmates. With Robin missing as well, Nami feels like the crew is falling apart. At 10 o'clock, Luffy waits outside for Usopp to arrive. When he shows up, Luffy warns him that he picked this fight, but Usopp tells him that unlike the other enemies he's faced, he knows how to defeat him. Usopp announces he has 8,000 henchmen, this is Maze's chopper, but Luffy is not fooled. Usopp opens up with an Usopp voodoo, but Luffy is unaffected. Luffy winds up, but hesitates as Usopp falls to the ground spitting up blood. Turns out it wasn't blood, but a special attack, Ketchup Star. He blinds Luffy using a flash dial, and follows up with a series of egg stars. Luffy tells him to stop messing around and take this seriously, but Usopp tells him he's very serious. This is how he fights. Usopp sends a deluxe pepper sauce star right into Luffy's mouth. While Luffy is dealing with his mouth on fire, he stumbles upon the caltrops that Usopp planted. Not wanting Luffy to recover, he sends Shuriken at him. While Luffy was dodging, he didn't notice a wind dial Usopp placed to, re to release gas that was masked by the scent of the rotting eggs. Usopp shoots a fire star, causing a massive explosion. After the smoke clears, Luffy lays on the ground. Usopp tries to catch his breath. As the two former crewmates fight, the waves crash over the Mary, making it look as though it is crying. So they after went there. the build up, pulling their punches. Yeah, after the build up, it goes to a straight up fight. Yeah, Our thoughts on this one. I thought that was really clever. It was like Usopp was kind of like slowly ramping it up, and Luffy's like, "Oh, he's just up to his old tricks," but he kind of used that as a guise to set his, to lay his trap. Yeah. So. Lying has become Lots his fighting style. his own. <laughs> <laughs> Always has been. <laughs> Always has been. <laughs> uh, the the gas, Luffy realizing that it's gas has lived rent-free in my head for so long. <laughs> oh my god. And the number of Lincoln Park AMVs set to this fight. <laughs> <laughs> not not to go you know, i um disrespect like the level of emotion that is well earned here but <laughs> dude <laughs> yeah so i mean usa pulls out some classics here um yeah he, pull, mm -hmm. he pulls his uh, eight thousand henchman move which 
you know, obviously Luffy wouldn't be intimidated by. Obviously, no, that's not true. Chopper, on the other hand, is completely Chopper. like, like whoa. <laughs> You we were busy the last few hours. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, now, we saw Voodoo, which also doesn't do anything for Luffy. Um, a little disappointed we didn't get a rubber band of doom here. I think that would have like really like yeah. been like you know the, the one thing missing that a like, full bag of tricks. Yeah, or or Usopp Hammer, which would also have been nice, but I think the rubber band of doom would have really like tied this together nicely. But yeah, we, we get some other like yeah. um, tactical moves from Usopp, which are um, I think Usopp. Like puts up like way more of a fight than you would expect. You would probably think this could be like so one sided, but the Usopp's like pulling out some stops here. Yeah, Luffy hasn't even had a chance to do anything. He's just been <laughs> reacting. <laughs> the egg star was genius. Yeah, that was yeah. really smart. And poor Chopper at the beginning of this chapter. Yeah, yeah. Like leave me alone, Chopper. Like we're not crewmates anymore. That hurts. Brutal. He's not even looking at them as he comes in. <laughs> and it breaks down to tears. Yeah, it's all very hard to watch. But Usopp is just... Usopp's out for blood right now. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, oh, eat this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love um, yeah. the, like, the fake out he does with the, the ketchup star. Mm-hmm. Like he takes advantage of like he expects Luffy to like be sympathetic to him. Like like Luffy stops his attack because he sees yeah. Usopp falls to the ground like bleeding. He's like, oh no, like Usopp, are you okay? And then uh, Usopp's like, oh, showing compassion for your enemy. Like yeah, that's a rookie move. And then he and then he shows him what's up. Yeah, he may not be the strongest, but he is a good like tactician. You know, he like thinks yeah. he's good at combat strategy. <laughs> And he puts on that on full display in this chapter. I mean, Usopp you know, survived this long for a reason. Yeah. And that Firestar was no joke. And like, you see, when you see Luffy's face as he's lying, as he's, after he's been struck by the Firestar, it was like, it looks like this glossed over look where he just realizes that like, yeah, he's going there. Like this is going yeah. there, you know. Like he, this I gotta is take serious. it seriously. Yeah, yeah. Worst possible outcome. Yep. And then the crying oh, no. Mary is the last panel. Like, oh my god. Yeah. I I love that it's that all, panel. It's all hidden. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, the Mary's like witnessing like like the fight and like yeah like the way that the waves like crash on the Mary's like very poetic. Yeah. Oh, and also throughout, like, throughout the argument and now throughout the fight, Oda's been, like, sprinkling in little flashbacks. Yeah. That just drive it home. Just like, <laughs> uh, you know, just like these glimpses of happy moments they've shared together just to, like, show you how far this has come and how drastic this is. 100%. Yeah. Brutal. I can, barely, I can I can barely look at the pages <laughs> to try and remember anything else. And right. Once was enough. <laughs> I don't oh want to relive this. The spread of just Luffy and Usopp squaring off with each other. I have um Evan, I don't know if you've seen this, but yeah. for the card game, I have like a little project I'm working on where it's a playmat, but it's like a collage of all like my favorite panels cool. and that one's gonna take just a huge huge section of the corner because just the atmosphere in it is insane yeah that's awesome i'll have to see that when it's finished as long as it's spoiler free <laughs> yeah. i'll let you know i'll let you know yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah we'll get there we'll get there but i do like it's... how both uh, both members like have resolve, and like they're committed to this fight. So they they know like they respect each other enough to be like, all right, we're gonna see this through. Uh, Luffy at the end of the the chapter, the like, keys made up his decision. He tells Nami, like, we can't back down. It's, it's too late. Like this is happening. Um, yeah, like Luffy made his decision. I made my decision, and we just have to battle it out. It's always great when Luffy has like those little moments of wisdom. He says, if it was something we could patch it by talking about it, it wouldn't have come to this. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's a, a time for talking and a time for fighting. Mm-hmm. So they're 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 fighting here. And like we like we've been talking about like Nami says like it feels like you know everything's falling apart. Like what's what's going on? Like this like it's like everything's happening all at once, so it's just like things are just like piling on here. As we cut to the flag five times in the same chapter. <laughs> just rude, <laughs> evil of Oda to do that. Yeah. But it really is just like one thing after another here. Yeah. After an arc where we saw battles to regain a, a lost crewmate. Yeah. Mm, now we're like never seeing the opposite. Yeah, Luffy had said last last arc, like I, I I'm not gonna lose a single one of my crew. Like I'll I'll die before I let that happen. Yeah. So big contrast from from that moment to this. That's a great point. <sighs> so intense. And the next chapter title is Captain. I wonder what that's about. <sighs> <laughs> All right. So um yeah, anything else on this chapter? I've had enough pain. Yeah, right. <laughs> let's let's end this. <laughs> All right. So moving on. Kadatsu's Unexpected Life on the Blue Sea, Volume 18. The explosion brings out the forest boss. The forest boss, a large baboon, is disturbed by the large burst of water. Wow. How unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of unexpected stuff going on here. <laughs> So many unexpected things. <laughs> I feel like it's funny because like Gadatsu expects nothing because he is like, yeah, although he has been, he seems to be like doing better than he has from the beginning of this arc when he was struggling to blink and open his mouth. <laughs> etc. He still crossed his arms like this though. Yeah, he, he's back. To the <laughs> he's, never, he's never gonna stop doing that. <laughs> nope. Yeah, it's like all these bosses. So now we have the out. Earth boss. And forest boss. And sky boss. Yep. Mm-hmm. Then we'll have the ocean boss. Mm. And the fire boss. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta have all of them. And then we can summon Captain Planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Captain, nice. how about we get the uh, effort summary for the next nice chapter? Segue. <laughs> Joel's killing it today. <laughs> mm-hmm. Alright, chapter 33, Captain. As the smoke begins to settle, Usopp readies himself for the next attack. Luffy emerges, launching a gum gum gatling. But Usopp counters with blasting cactus stars and triple exploding stars, keeping Luffy at bay. Luffy then lands a gum gum pistol, which lands, sending Usopp off balance. Luffy then attacks using a gum gum bazooka, but at the last second, Usopp absorbs the attack with an impact dial which he uses on Luffy, Luffy at point-blank range, sending him flying backwards. Usopp, who also took damage from the impact dial, seems to be out of tricks, and Luffy lines up a gum-gum bullet, which strikes Usopp in the stomach, leaving him crumpled on the ground. Luffy angrily yells out, there's no way he could defeat me, and starts to walk back to the ship and tells Usopp he can do what he likes with the merry-go. Luffy struggles with his own decision, when Zoro points out he is the captain and shouldn't doubt himself. The Shaw has decided they must leave the ship and can never return. The battle is over, but it seems both sides have lost. Ooh. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Brute. Can't nobody wins. Yeah, I really like the way that you phrased that last <sighs> sentence. It's very true. Yeah, this is so brutal. It's like there's like no one wins. Like no one really won the battle. Like brutal. But Usopp, I feel like like we were saying he impressed us in the last chapter. Like this chapter, he really turned it on. Like he I think he legitimately had Luffy on his heels. Mm-hmm. Um this was a real battle, this chapter. Like this was ser- this was serious. Yeah. I mean, like he, he really brought us all and he put up a fight and he, he proved to Luffy that like he wasn't just going to be a pushover. Yeah, like the impact dial, like that was a real that was a real blow. That yeah, was a that was solid a smart blow move. on Luffy. That was a really smart move. 
He's like, I don't have the power, but I can absorb your power and blast it right back <laughs> in your face. It's a brilliant move. And he was that committed that he was willing to do that after after the Frankie family just beat him to hell twice. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, he is not at 100% health. He's barely at 1%. I mean, I, he might have, <laughs> yeah, I was, I was just going to say. I was just going to say, realistically, he's probably at like 20%. His entire body is like wrapped in bandages. Yeah, brutal. I mean, get the flashback of Usopp making the the uh, jolly in this chapter. So sad. And uh, yeah, more memories and just kind of showing like what they had. Mm -hmm. And just the entire crew's reaction to that final blow. Yeah, yeah. I love like how much is conveyed in this chapter without them actually saying anything. Mm. Mm -hmm. like the, the panels like really speak for yeah. themselves and totally. the subtlety too yeah like nami and chopper's panels totally but like just how different zoro and sanji's reactions are but how subdued mm -hmm. those reactions are at the same time yeah like they they understand the severity of the situation like obviously right but like you know they they just process it differently than like Nami and Chopper. Right, because I feel like Sanji and Zoro are the warriors of this crew. And so, like, they can respect a, a duel in, in that manner where a show of strength. And I feel like they're seeing it through a different lens than Chopper and Nami, who are coming at it from a completely emotional standpoint, where it's just, like, mm. hard to watch. Because they don't want either they don't want either side to win, really. Well, Sanji is giving me, like, he, he I think he has, like, a look of, like, disbelief. He's like... Like, have we really come to this? And Zoro's just like, Zoro's like the most stoic. Like, he's. Yeah, Zoro's Zoro. Yeah. So he's like, all right, so that's, that's the way it played out. Yeah. Ah, oh, man. So hard to watch. And Luffy, too. Like, Luffy wins, but then, like, he falls to his knees and, like, like, like you idiot. Like, there's no way you, like, you could have thought you could beat me. Like, 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 you, you brought this upon yourself. Like, it didn't have to be like this. Mm hmm. Which is actually exactly what you were saying about Usopp going into the Frankie family's house earlier. Totally. Which I didn't think about the first time. Uh, what was that? Usopp knowing going into a battle he knew he was going to lose. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you, just, you just made me see the connection there. Which I think says a lot about Usopp. Because like he just has like a very strong conviction in this case. So he, yeah. he, like, he has something that totally. is worth fighting for to him. And like, he's willing to like put himself through this because he cares that much about the ship. Yeah, and it's like at the end of all that being a reader who loves Usopp and Luffy, you're like ready for them to reconcile after this insane battle. And Luffy even has a moment where he kind of like stops, takes a beat, says this is too much. And you have a feeling that he's about to go back on everything that he set up to this point. And Zoro steps in and is like, you know, don't doubt yourself. You yeah. Know? And that was a really intense moment. Um, and Zoro is someone who hasn't said anything pretty much this entire fight. Like, from the argument straight through the battle, hasn't said a word. And then I feel like Luffy has a moment of where he's questioning his own leadership and his own decisioning, decision making. And then Zoro in that moment decides to speak up and be like, don't doubt yourself. Which, as a reader, is so hard to read because you were so ready for Luffy to be like... <laughs> You know, <laughs> like turn back and just be like, I can't, I can't take this. You can't, yeah. you can't leave this crew, like whatever. Um, so that was a really heavy moment. Definitely. Yeah, I think that, that's a really good point. And like, like we're talking about earlier, how like Zoro lets people make their decisions. He doesn't step in like unless he feels he has to. And like in this case here, like he, I think he's fulfilling his role to his captain, be like, I'm, I'm here like to follow you, but you have to make sure that like if you're gonna be leading us, you have to make sure that like you're sure of yourself. Like we can't have a captain who is going to like like guess himself or like you know, not be sure like what to do. We need a decisive captain who's going to make the decisions and stick to it. Cause like if like if you can't follow yourself, then how are we gonna follow you? Yeah. In contrast, we get um Sanji having to counsel Chopper. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Telling him to be strong. But also 
the fact that the kind thing to do is to leave Usopp alone. So I'm showing him like pity. Yeah. Yep. Which is, I feel like is a really cool but way. To Chopper... have, like... Oh yeah, go for it. No, I was just, I was just gonna say that he couldn't help himself. He still left supplies, so Usopp can mend yeah. himself. <laughs> yeah. Which was so sweet, but sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. What were you saying? No, dude, you're good. <laughs> uh, it feels like two sides of the same coin. Of Zoro saying, "Okay, we need to rely on you. You can't doubt yourself." But at the same time, we have to. It sounds you talking about taking care of Usopp at the same time, and like that's the other side of that decision. You know, you have to understand that you have to keep going forward with the decision that you've made. But Sanji basically saying in a different way, like, you can't show him pity. You can't, in a sense, go back or make a compromise on this. But for Zoro, it's the more the more duty, the more understanding your role route. And for Sanji, it's the more interpersonal, like think about the other person sort of route. Mm -hmm. And it's also like, um, like respecting Usopp's decision. Like Usopp decided to leave the crew. Mm -hmm. And like he went to the fight knowing what the outcome would be. Mm -hmm. So like we have to respect that decision. And like by going to help him and treat him, like you're going to kind of like undo like what what he did. So like it, it's it's like I think it's a respectful move for Usopp mm -hmm. to like acknowledge him um as a person and like the decisions that he made. Hundred percent agree. Then Luffy just relinquishes the Mary to Usopp. Like after after all that, mm -hmm. like he's like, like we have to say like goodbye to the Mary. Uh, it, you can have the ship if it means that much to you. Like you can have it, but we have to find a new ship and we're gonna keep moving forward. Like he he wants to be the pirate king, so like he can't let like this stop him from achieving his goal. This is like just a very large like obstacle that he has to overcome in order to proceed and move forward with his dream. So no matter what happens, he has to keep going. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like we see a lot of resolve from Luffy in this whole volume of just like pushing through, making decisions to and able to get the crew moving forward, like you were just saying. Yeah. And then like the the final page where it shows like Luffy crying with Chopper. Like yeah, this is definitely taking a toll on Luffy too. Like he he took no joy in winning this fight, and like this this is like crushing his spirit. Yeah, it looks to me like Usopp is also in a puddle of his own tears. Yeah, mm -hmm. Usopp as well. He's crying. Nami's crying. Chopper's hysterical. Yeah, yeah, like really really tough stuff here, for sure. Yeah. Like like you said, like we've like grown so attached to like like these characters and like you expect them to resolve it and they don't. Yeah. Right. And with the even with the Mary, like this whole time I feel like I've been optimistic that that'll be good news. And then with, with Usopp this entire time I've been like, Yeah, this will turn around. Like they'll figure it out. <laughs> you know. So yeah, it's really heartbreaking just to kind of see these milestones. Um happening it really messes with like your expectations and it makes it feel like all the more like powerful just like how yeah. emotional like this this whole situation is um totally because like you you expect like like good things to happen or them to like work things out and like this i think this like really tests like the like the crew like they've never been tested like this before yeah all right um any other thoughts on this one all i got okay well i'm sure the next chapter will be uh a little bit more lighthearted. So. <laughs> yeah. oh. optimism hey. chapter 334 big trouble in the secret room <laughs> the strats have all abandoned the mary leaving usopp on the ship alone the following day there is a commotion across border seven something happened last night and they wonder if it has something to do with the destruction of the frankie house the remaining Straw Hats have set up at the rooftop inn. Sanji had spent the night keeping watch at the cape in case Robin returned, but they still have no idea where she is. Nami arrives on the rooftop with the others and reports the iceberg was shot last night. 
Iceberg is in a coma, but the Galio shipwrights are summoned to the office. Kaku and Lulu don't know who could shoot Iceberg, but there was no signs of a robbery or that anything was stolen. Lulu wonders if Corgi from the world government was retaliating, but Kaku thinks it's unwise to accuse the government. Upon learning about the assassination attempt, Luffy takes off and sees if he can check things out. Nami offers to come along. Sanji and Chopper decide to look around the town for Robin, while Zoro decides to hang back. Frankie arrives back in Water 7 and disembarks from the sea train. Meanwhile, outside the Galley Law Company office, the citizens gather around, eager to find out what's going on with the Iceberg. The doctor looks over Iceberg as the investigators inspect the crime scene. There were no signs of a break-in, and the only clue left behind was a mask. Frankie returns with Kiwi and Mozu to find Frankie House in pieces. Furious, he realizes it must have been the work of the Straw Hats. Okay, so uh, not great news. Uh, so to add <laughs> on top of all that, Iceberg has uh, survived an assassination attempt. He's currently in a coma. Mm-hmm. It's going from bad to worse to <laughs> worser to <laughs> the socks. One, one, silver, <laughs> one silver lining. Usopp is officially captain of the Merry Go. <laughs> yeah. He's finally did it. That's exactly what he imagined when he it's said yeah, 8,000 henchmen. <laughs> yeah. No tangerine trees. But no tangerine trees. 8,000 ta- henchmen. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that full page of like the Merry Go just completely empty and Usopp laying on the deck is so depressing. So depressing. It really no shows words. like how hollow it is to like, have the Merry now as like, a consolation. It's like like you have the Merry, yeah. but like was yeah. it worth it? Yeah, th- those are a tough, yeah, no a tough uh, series of panels. Yep. At least Usopp was on the color spread. I know. I was looking at that. I was like, oh my god. Is Usopp going to be in this? <laughs> yeah. He is. Is that right? They, they look happy, so happy. Right? He is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank god. Yep. On actually, by note, I, I love the um in the page after the all the, the, the montage that we don't have to look at anymore. Um, This guy's apron, this bad rose apron. <laughs> that's, that's pretty sick mm, that was pretty cool uh water seven uh they got style okay yep. got the drip got that water water drip <laughs> <laughs> yeah so then there's like this mysterious um like attempt to kill iceberg we, we don't know who did it or why it doesn't seem like they broke in or forced entry um so they don't know how they got in Mm-hmm. And um, Iceberg didn't die, so that they failed the assassination attempt. So that's good, at least. We know Frankie's got an alibi. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know he he did, he did seem like he was one of the suspects. So uh, yeah, but but we as readers know that he was shopping because mm-hmm. he was getting off of the train, <laughs> spending that money, spending those two million uh, <laughs> berries on that thing. Yeah, to do the <laughs> thing. <laughs> But the only slice of the ones, the one slice of evidence we do get is the mask, which looks very familiar. I will say that. Oh. Um. Okay. So Mm -hmm. which Mm -hmm. which mask do you think that is? I recognized the mask from earlier in the last volume when we see Robin disappearing with a masked companion. Okay. Sanji approaches and tries to catch her. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, interesting clue, or at least the same markings. Yeah, on the mask. Yeah, could be. Yeah, could be. I just noticed that this doctor literally has like, I don't know the name for like the I guess the Red Cross, just like on his forehead, so that we all know <laughs> this guy's yeah. a doctor. <laughs> just so we're clear, he's he's in the medical profession. Hey, he could be a construction worker. We don't know. Because they also yeah, have a cross. I'm sorry. I don't want to assume. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's on me. That was, that was he doesn't, he doesn't have uh, he doesn't have the line going across the helmet, so maybe not. Also, another great Polly moment. He just wants to get to his boss. 
screw the reporters. Yeah. Screw the story. He just wants to make sure <laughs> Iceberg's okay. Yeah. Which, like, you know, it, he's not the only one, but right. it was emphasized. Yeah, this is affecting yeah, the whole town. It was cathartic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, like we had talked about earlier, like, uh, Iceberg is like such an effective leader. Like the town also, they they love him as a leader. So like they they like care that like you know he's injured and like he could be dying. Like they like, hey, what's happening to our leader? Like we want to make sure he's okay. And Luffy even brings it up. Everyone loved and respected him. Yeah, I'm gonna so, like, check who, this who out. do this? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love how quickly Luffy was to jump into action. It's like I'm gonna go check that out because Luffy clearly trusts these people. Like. You know, yeah. In the argument he had with Usopp, he could have doubled down and been like, "You're right. We don't know these people. Like, maybe we should get a second opinion." But Luffy clearly trusts these people because he stuck by their assessment of the Merry Go. Yeah, that's a good point. And we know Luffy is a good judge of character. Hmm, it's true. And we have another case where Zoro being passive. Mm. Yeah, just kind of like yep. I'm just gonna kind of, wait here and do nothing. <laughs> let's see. Let's see how things play out here. <laughs> Aggressively <laughs> passive. <laughs> Where is um? Sanji mentions that he was at. I think they called it the Rocky Cape. Is that where they docked the ship? I think so. I believe so. Okay. Yeah, because he was waiting for Robin. Head cannon. I. I think he was just as much worried about Usopp as he was waiting for Robin. Fair point. He he wasn't gonna like go to him, but he's also like, I just want to make sure, like, could be. It's not too bad for him. I don't know. Just yeah. just a weird head cannon. But he also, but yeah, also Robin. Yeah, to kind of support that, he says, "Um, I stayed by Rocky Cape all night, keeping watch, just in case Robin returned." So he has like a little, a little pause. Yes, yeah, so he has a little pause there. So like, he kind of, it seems like mm. he might be kind of catching himself. So that, that's a good point. I didn't notice that, but I think that's a good point. I love Sanji, man. I love Sanji. <laughs> he cares. He cares. <sighs> oh, another thing from uh, that page. Luffy's on his seat. Yeah. Like he's taking the same position he would. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> Come on. So good. He's yeah. Gotta go take the highest uh, point you can find. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. We got a murder mystery on our hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Evan, any um any gut feelings about this or any thoughts after this chapter on the who done it? Aside from <sighs> well, the yeah, aside from what I said, like I feel like the mask is obviously a big clue, and we know Frankie has an alibi, so that's really all I got at this point. Okay. All right. Uh let's move on to the next part of the cover story. Gadatsu's Unexpected Life on the Blue Sea, Volume 19, The Sky Boss, who made the Forest Boss his henchman. Gadatsu recruits the Forest Boss the way he recruited the Earth Boss by defeating him with a jet punch. Smoke and elbow. <laughs> <laughs> Another successful uh, victory. Uh, that's what I call aggressive negotiation. Uh, even, the, even the bump is smoking. <laughs> yeah. Over the Earth boss is like, yeah, been there. <laughs> I can relate. I know your pain. Is that what I looked like? <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't even wearing a helmet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And we got like the steam bath guy in the background, just like chilling. He get out to her now, just like good buddies. Yeah. It's like Gadatsu does the heavy lifting. I'll just uh supervise, yeah. I'll supervise. <laughs> All right, let's get Evan summary for the next chapter. All right, chapter three thirty five, warning. Frankie stands mortified in front of the pile of rubble rubble, formerly known as the Frankie House. When his lackeys return, they tell Frankie the straw hats are staying at an inn in town and are on their way to dock one. Sirens begin to blare throughout Water 7, warning the approach of Aqua Laguna. Having no clue what that means, Sanji and Chopper ask the locals to tell them Aqua Laguna is an annual high tide that will submerge the town in seawater. Sanji and Chopper now need to hurry to fi- and find Robin. 
Meanwhile, Luffy and Nami arrive at Dock 1 to a large crowd of people demanding updates on their beloved Mr. Iceberg. When suddenly, music rings out and the stage is spotted above Dock 1 where there's, a, where there's some synchronized dancing and the musical guest reveals themselves to be Frankie. Frankie then calls out Luffy, who steps forward voluntarily. Just then, Iceberg regains consciousness, which is made public knowledge and the people of Water 7 rejoice. As Iceberg's friends stand by his side, he says he remembers the events of last night. There are two people present, a large man with a mask, and a woman who he believes to be Nico Robin. Yeah, so like every chapter, it's like things can't get any worse, right? And it gets worse. It gets worse. <laughs> now Robin's looking sus. So sus. Yeah, so to yeah. to Evans um guess earlier, he, he noticed the mask, which was the person that was with Robin, which now makes her look guilty because uh now that that's corroborated by what Iceberg saw. So he says it was Robin and somebody in the mask. A tall, yeah, so blonde haired woman with sharp <laughs> eyes. It had to be Nico Robin. Yeah, because he has the wanted I'm poster done, from yeah. when she was a kid. So he he might recognize Robin from that, but he, he doesn't know what Robin looks like now, presumably. But he knows who Robin is. And it seems like he possibly recognized her. And we know that she is in Water 7. So mm-hmm. as a reader, we know that. Mm-hmm. Right. He had he had the bounty poster up, like Evan mentioned, before this assassination attempt, right? Yeah, so it was just shown on the back yeah. wall. Yeah. Something's afoot. Something's afoot. So is this um this whole this whole Aqua Laguna thing's also afoot. What's coming up? <laughs> yeah, dude. Everything is going down. I just I so what happens at the once annual <laughs> Aqua Laguna is Whoa! happening today. <laughs> In the middle of the assassination <laughs> attempt. You get the full Water 7 experience. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Hopefully somebody tells Usopp. Yeah. Hopefully. Ooh. I just want the next cover story to be like someone who's, whose train ride was delayed by the Aqua Laguna. Because <laughs> Coco's like, yeah, the train's not running tonight. I just to be like, oh, God! Yeah. I got all this stuff from the shopping center. I have all this food. I was getting my family a nice meal, and now it's ruined. <laughs> and maybe it's always other people who are like, who are going to go on different trains, different places, and they have to like find some makeshift way to brave the store. I don't know. It just, seems, it just seems like a funny thing that could happen. That's yeah, when, I think uh, the the, the cost comes out. Comes out. <laughs> Yo, Kazuna. Yo, Kazuna comes out and he's like, "The train's good for nothing. I'll take you where you need to go." <laughs> I'm the train We're now. <laughs> I'm the train. Come with me. Get on my back. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Aqua Guin. I think it's like um, it's an interesting like concept and wrinkle to like the like the city of Water Seven, like how mm-hmm. because like it's it's basically like a large city on the water. So it's probably more susceptible to like the tides here, and uh, it's going to be felt more drastically because like it's just going to be like completely taken over by this large wave. Um, yeah, so I, I think that's like a like a really cool concept to to throw in here. Definitely. Mm-hmm. We also get quite the performance from Frankie, who uh, yeah. we see without his mask for the first time. Yeah. So now we see yes. what he actually looks like. Yeah. Is this anything close to what you were expecting? Uh, no, this is not at all what I was expecting. Uh, I don't know how you could possibly expect that. Uh, he's got some... Wow. Yeah. Uh, he's got like the, the Popeye arms with the star tattoos. Um, yeah. He's got like Ace Ventura vibes. Ooh, totally. Jim Carrey looking. Totally does. Got and the Speedo. Shades, <laughs> calling everybody bro. Speedo, Hawaiian t shirt, big old chain. Yeah. <laughs> Luffy's like, who is that bro. weirdo? <laughs> <laughs> I 
I don't know why, but Speedo Guy, it feels like top five disparaging nicknames given by Luffy. <laughs> 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 like damn, you really That's a good one. You really went for blood there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> there were so many things you could have brought up, but like <laughs> so good. So Luffy too. <laughs> yeah, so I love I how getting... like go ahead, Cody. <laughs> I was gonna say this guy literally brought a sheet to hide behind <laughs> and obscure his own silhouette. <laughs> Like the, the curtain's still up. The big reveal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I love how like, the, 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 crowd, the crowd's reacting like, oh, come on, this guy again? Yeah. Dude, Frankie, just leave us alone. <laughs> you do this every day. Stop Did dancing. somebody call my name? <laughs> no. We didn't. We didn't call you. Get lost. <laughs> 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 we see him. He's, uh, he's dancing. Nah, we don't want to hear. Just disappear. <laughs> uh, he calls himself yeah. the hero. <laughs> uh, I don't yeah, like how so this makes Robin look. We've already lost one yeah. crewmate. I, look, I can't. I can't bear to lose another crewmate. And like yeah. you said, Nico, like Robin's been. MIA this pretty much entire volume. I think she had. I think yeah. like I mean still she mm. still is MIA, but this is the first mention of her for like an entire volume. Yeah. And we just had in the um last volume, like Aokiji like talked about how like you can't trust her. Like right. every group that she's been a part of, she's been the last like survivor. So like I think this is like really like reinforcing like Aokiji's warning. It's like do you really know her? Like, can you really trust her? And it's like, yeah, it makes the straw hats not look good as well that like they're associating with her. Yup, planting that seed of doubt. I don't know. I like Robin's character, so I hope that uh, she's not in it deep with some shady characters. Although that would kind of fit her mo. What? I mean, she did say her. her <laughs> <laughs> she she did say um like her skill was assassination when she first introduced herself to the rest of the crew. Um, I th was it Usopp oh, that asked her? Like in Alabasta? Yeah. So I forgot about that. Yeah, he's like, like, so like, what is it that you do? And she's like, assassination. I think she did like a wink. But like, she was like being a little quiet about it. Oh but yeah. God, that's right. I forgot about that. And she's got the like the devil for powers to do it. So <laughs> yeah. CP9. CP9. <laughs> that's right yeah because um the guy with the mask said that he was with cp9 mm. so we don't really know what their deal is but it seems like she's involved with them in some way it's the mi6 but <laughs> bad guys <laughs> <laughs> not great not great not great <laughs> things are not top 10 anime better. betrayals <laughs> <laughs> oh uh one little thing um that i noticed in the in the panel where we see the newspaper article about iceberg's assassination attempt does like the mm -hmm. guy holding the the piece of lumber behind iceberg give like the vibes of like Usopp being in the corner of Luffy's wanted poster to <laughs> anyone else oh, I man. have an agenda I have an agenda <laughs> and I will support it you think there's more to it no, I just think it's. Oh. I'm just. I'm just here for Luffy equals iceberg pattern propaganda. Oh, that's, I see. Okay, that's <laughs> that's what I'm peddling here. So you're comparing this. I'll to take any Luffy's. chance. Okay. The photo bomb. <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> that's 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 my entire. That's my whole goal with this volume is like Luffy iceberg, Luffy iceberg. Mm. That's what I got. Yeah. But does that mean that there can't be two captains? Because it seems like iceberg is like a leadership role. So like, what well, Luffy? That's Luffy thing, wanted. That he okay, wants well, Iceberg to be on the on the crew. So you invite him to be on the crew. And he, he kind of turned it down. He's like, no, like, I have I have these other captain things to do. I'm just saying, like, you know, they're, they're, I think that kind of like helps him meant that like Iceberg is like like the leader type figure. So like he couldn't be on the crew with Luffy because you know they're the two leader leader figures. 
Yeah, and that and that's more where I'm going with it. Like yeah. Iceberg's place as a leader reflecting Luffy's yep. place as a leader and like the thematic yes. connection to them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm just kind of spitballing like, you know, because they are still looking for somebody to be a carpenter. So I think mm. it's less likely to be Iceberg if that's the case. But, okay, yeah. yeah. But we never, we never know. know. Yeah. I'm, I'm, never just, know. I'm just seems throwing full of uh, good prospects. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else? I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Kadatsu's Unexpected Life on the Blue Sea, Volume 20. Leave the forest boss in charge of the island and keep digging, Earth boss. The forest boss is left to watch the surface while the Earth boss continues digging holes. So they have their uh, domains. All right. Real quick before we do the next mm-hmm. chapter, um, the SBS. Uh, confirms that uh, Montblanc Noland and Montblanc Cricket had a real chestnut on their head. Yeah. <laughs> which was a, a conversation that we had. It was one of those we conversations did. where like, I wonder uh, what, if that's actually a chestnut or what it, that is. Yeah. So here's Oda coming through again and answering <laughs> our obscure questions. And that's why yeah, I think it's yeah. like typically best not to think too hard about like those little details. You just kind of accept it at like face value. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's right. But it, it does make you wonder like, like what's going on with this guy? Like why does he have a chest on his head? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on. Chapter 336, Luffy versus Frankie. Now meeting Luffy, Frankie tells him that he's angry that he destroyed his house. Nami asks about the money, but Frankie says he already spent it all. Luffy says he doesn't care about the money, he just wants to kick his butt. Frankie feels the same way. He inhales and breathes out fire. Luffy and Nami suspect he has a devil fruit until he jumps into the water. Frankie says he didn't eat a devil fruit as he launches his fist from his arm attached to a chain, launching Luffy. He explains that he's a cyborg. Over at the Galilog Company, the workers gather around Iceberg. Luchu was able to contact the government and found out that Robin is currently a member of the Straw Hats. They wonder if this was retaliation for being told they can't fix the ship. The news gets out to the public that the Straw Hats were responsible for the attack on Iceberg. Talstone comes running into Iceberg's room, shouting that Luffy and Frankie are fighting at Dock 1. Iceberg thinks to himself that he doesn't think the Straw Hats attacked because he turned them down and wonders if they are connected to the government and are after something else he has. As Luffy and Frankie battle it out, the Galilaw shipwrights show up to take down Luffy as well. Well, shit. <laughs> yeah. Wait, it gets worse. Not coming to join the crew, they're coming to kick your butt. <laughs> and they're like, hey, uh, you, you try to kill our boss? Right, we're not going to let that fly. Not cool, man. Yeah, this is looking bad. This is looking real bad. Yeah, so a lot, a lot to unpack here as well. I think there's a lot of information that's being presented here. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, I do want to bounce back to Evan, though, because we're now getting more information about this Frankie dude. Like, what do you think of this guy? Now that you can see him, like, in action, like, what his deal is. Yeah, Frankie has clearly had some work done. Um <laughs> A cy- like a cyborg? I was not expecting that. Right. Um, I thought that was hilarious when, like, he's definitely his devil fruit powers, and then he jumps in the water, and they're like, yeah. that was a weird thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, oh my god, he doesn't have... And he comes out being like, I don't have devil fruit powers, I'm a cyborg. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he seems like a pretty formidable opponent. Um, he's got s- plenty of tricks up his sleeves. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I remember like being surprised that this guy was like a cyborg the first time through the series. I was like that that felt like such a good like a different concept from anything we've really seen so far. Like we well, haven't like, been introduced to like a cyborg type character in this world. Um that was the first. So that, yeah, I think that kind of like, implies like um just like yeah, just like like something we haven't really seen is like like this kind of level of technology. We've seen like trains here. Like a cyborg feels like kind of a leap almost, you know? Mm. Totally. Especially because he looks very human. Like he doesn't look. Yeah. Human. 
So it's some pretty good cybernetics. <laughs> and so versatile. Cool character design, though. Yeah. Very. Retractable arms, similar to Luffy, actually. But <laughs> the mechanic, the mechanical version. Mm. Um, I, I really love seeing Zoro and Luffy's uh, wanted photos side by side. Like we've talked about the, the difference between them, but seeing them side by side is just so great. Yeah. Luffy's got his big old smile and <laughs> Zoro's got like blood running down his face and is like very stern looking. Yeah. I love the disparity yeah. between those two. Yeah, the word got out that um the Straw Hats are in cahoots with uh Robin. The newspaper yeah. system in Water Seven. Yeah. Like uh-huh. the, the the fact they got this put together, printed, distributed that fast. That's um yeah. impressive. That's impressive. Hot off the press. Oh yeah, it's getting intense. I don't like these odds. Nope. The entire Galila Foreman group and Frankie versus Luffy and Nami. Don't like that. <laughs> don't like that. I don't like those odds. <laughs> yeah, really I love. Uh... Like... Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say shit's hitting the fan, and it's just like all coming. <laughs> Shit is hitting the fan. <laughs> like over and over again. <laughs> Yeah, like every chapter. See, yeah, for real, just keeps compounding. And we spent an entire volume without seeing Robin. Mm. All we've seen are uh, the allegations against her. Crazy man! Sure, yeah. I hope we don't lose two crewmates in this arc. That would suck. <laughs> I really hope Robin's not. Yeah, evil. I mean, not not looking great. Not looking good. I'm not terribly optimistic on that. Right? I've lost a bit of optimism in this art. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> so they far. beat you down, Evan. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I feel like Oda, there's always been kind of like a happy result or like things usually kind of work themselves out. Things kind of, you know, end how you want them to end. But uh, not this volume. This volume is uh, taking away two valuable crew members. Mary Go and mm. Usopp. Yeah, if you would compare it to like Alabasta, where it's like when the bad things keep happening with the crocodile's plans, like he always had like contingencies where it seemed like like hope like a uh, hopeless and like, Luffy kept losing. Like you always felt like at the end of the day, like eventually Luffy was gonna like get there, you know? Right. Or like Skypea, where it's like um like the Kingdom Come Cloud like forms and like 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 Angel Island gets like wiped out. You still feel like at the end of the day Luffy's probably gonna like win. But like when you get to like something like this, where it's like the crew is like falling apart and like, like all these different pieces, like, like coming into play and things just seem like really bad. Like, yeah, like I, I do feel like there's a, a different vibe here where it doesn't feel like you said as hopeful. Mm-hmm. It's like, everything is going to work out now. It's kind of like, are things going to work out? Like, I don't, I don't feel too like hopeful about this. Yeah, mm-hmm. totally. Storms are coming. Yeah. Aqua good. Literally. um i do also like uh more of like frankie's interactions uh Mm. he he says he feels unstoppable this week so just like like the fact that he's like phrasing it as like the entire week is like he he determined like okay no i'm having a great week it's like he just like decides all right it's a whole week thing it's not like i'm having a great day i'm feeling great today or unstoppable right now it's like the whole week so I just kind of love that little like quirk. <laughs> and then he also justifies taking the money because he's like, well, you guys are pirates. You probably just took it from someone else. So you probably didn't even like earn it yourself. So really it wasn't yours to begin with. So, so he, he justifies he... it that way. Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, yeah. He's really good at having plausible deniability. Because um, <laughs> I feel like there's like, there was a big amount of that. Uh, there was a fair amount of that with uh, his conversation with Usopp too. Um, yeah, because he was saying, "Okay, you know, he probably stole it. I mean, you could talk right. to the Navy, but they'll arrest you. Yeah, and, you know, <laughs> too bad you couldn't guard the money. Like, I mean, it's that's that's mm. that's all. That's on you, homie. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No honor amongst these. <laughs> yeah, and he so he says he's already spent all the money too. So seems like they're not getting that money back like early in the volume it's also like oh like now he says oh they're gonna get the money back you believe her at that moment 
and especially like the way like you know the, the straw hats like have like their walk on like the frankie house and it's like oh, okay they mean business like they're probably gonna like overcome this but it's kind of like eventually get to the point where like luffy like and the crew are saying it's not about the money but like we know that they need that money and now we have right. confirmation that frankie has spent that money and they have no way of getting that money back so that's gone mm-hmm. i mean they, they sell the 100 million but they lost like two-thirds of their money oh <sighs> yeah i was gonna say i love that it's specifically after that's established like you're not getting the money back and that's when he's like I'm just here to kick your ass. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that that's more oh, under the bridge. <laughs> yeah. You just you 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 made my best friend quit my crew. <laughs> yeah. It's personal. I yeah. I don't know. I feel like if if Usopp didn't have the burden of being the one to lose the money that there would have been at least some chance of Luffy being able to like at least reconcile things with him instead of it escalating to that degree personally. See, I don't I think I don't it would know have if been that's hard, the case. But like yeah. I, I think, think it was inevitable. Hmm. Yeah, I think it would have happened either way, just because like how much like the Mary means to Usopp. Like I don't see a way he would have just accepted like Luffy saying, you know what, we're gonna replace the Mary. Like um that that's just the way it is. Like, I don't see a world where Usopp says, you know what, Luffy, it's tough, but, like, you're right. Like, I think he would fight this, like, to the death or to the nail, like, uh, no matter what the circumstances were. You think it would have gotten to this this level that it did? Like this, Yeah, like, I, I, think, I think Usopp would have still gone as far as he did um, okay. if it meant trying to save the Mary. Hmm. All right. Like, I, think, I don't yeah. think it helped I mean... getting to this point. But yeah, I think yeah. Usopp's motivations are going to be like more. Like, the Mary is his priority in this case. That's mm-hmm. the, the most important thing, and that's why like it, it means so, so much to him, like in general. Um, because again, like the personal attachment he has to the ship, um, like but him feeling responsible for losing the money to fix it, like I think that doesn't help the situation. But I think either way, Usopp would have fought to save the Mary. Yeah, I, I think if Usopp was with the crew when they were receiving that information like if he was at if he was hearing that spoken from galley lock like and the the shipwrights i think his beef would have been with the shipwrights and not with luffy mm. right uh, yeah because luffy reacted the same way yeah when he had the same the reaction right. right and they would have been on the same page yes and the frankie family's the one that took that stopped Usopp from being there to hear from the shipwrights yeah 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 I think it still would have ended with like I think Usopp still would have had like a huge thing and Usopp might have still left the crew. But I personally think that Usopp's feeling of being useless and ineffectual and responsible for the crew's setback it was to me the one of the biggest factors in it escalating to that level, personally. Yeah, I think that did maybe like amplify his, um yeah. like the the sense of I'm useless too. Like, like you've been saying, like, there's been, like, moments and, like, build up to it, like, these little seeds being planted about Usopp having, like, that, like, f- the feeling of, like, insecurity and feeling like he's not, like, carrying his weight as part of the crew. So I, I think you're right. Like, he, that's been amplified for sure by these circumstances. And it's just, like, kind of reinforced that for him. But his connection to the ship is also extremely important to this as well. And... It is, I think, an equal contributor to yeah to that, yeah, like you were saying. But damn, damn, yeah. So damn. quite the volume. Yeah. Yeah. Does anybody have any other thoughts on the chapter or the volume as a whole? I think this was one of the most emotional volumes we've had, and like, for sure, you know, we've had. I mean, we've had some really emotional backstories but not like a lot like happening it you know a lot like in real life like in real time i mean yeah um where we're seeing events unfold in real time and it end in tragedy like it did here um and also as a reader like because you have all the information right so like as you're reading it it's so hard to like um watch everything unfold knowing everything that we know as readers um 
that was that was brutal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I loved when you said Evan that I don't love it because like it sucks to hear someone losing their sense of optimism. <laughs> but like to me, that's like that's one of the most effectual things about like this volume and this arc is like oh. I really want to be optimistic, but like this is the first time where it's really, really hard to be after everything that's going on. Yeah, yeah. And it's I like think when they kill off to... a char- like one of your favorite characters, and you're like, "Oh my gosh, none of my <laughs> none of the characters are safe now." Like they went, like it goes there. You know, we lose, seemingly lost, like you know, one of the OGs. Yeah, and I think that speaks to the the quality of the writing and the story itself that like i think this is the reaction that you should have reading this mm-hmm. like this is this is not meant to be like oh this is happy and hopeful this is like meant to make you feel and like have experience like these emotions like we're attached to these characters we care for them um and we don't want to see them go through these bad things but it does make very compelling and very interesting stories so like from a story standpoint like it's like really well done and um, I, I would say this kind of like uh, it feels like an Empire Strikes Back moment where it's like, you know, things are like going badly, you know, like Empire Strikes Back doesn't end on a happy note. Like not every story has to be like a happy ending. So like, the, like the fact that like One Piece can have like these really like high like emotional highs and emotional lows, um, I, I think that's like such a credit to Oda's writing. I I feel like this is like super important for really expanding the story of one piece and like bring it to like a new level that we haven't experienced in this way uh, because like it doesn't feel like anything we've had in the story so far it feels very unique in that sense so i do think that makes it feel strong so far uh and it just like we we feel like we're going along with the crew because we've been with them for so long at this point like we've seen so much of their journey and we know what they've been through and to see them going through this now like it feels like we're going with them as part of the crew and like we're like we don't want to see them in this but like we feel from like in this moment yay (laughs) (laughs) Uh, yeah so unfortunately we are going to end the volume kind of on a dour (laughs) note but that's how it goes sometimes. And um, yeah, like, like I was saying, I just think that that's like the strength of One Piece. Um, like it, it can make you feel like, really happy. It can make you feel really sad. But like that's, I think, the marker of a good story. Mm-hmm. Agreed. And I cannot wait to hear Evan's thoughts on volume 36. Oh, dude, I'm freaking <laughs> out. I'm freaking out right now, man. Yeah, That was a lot. Yeah. There's a yeah. lot up in the air right now. A lot of things that I've loved about One Piece for so long are up in the air. Well, uh, you'll have to see how that uh, continues next volume. Uh, But for right now, that will conclude this week's episode of the We Are Reading One Piece podcast. You can find this episode wherever podcasts are found at wearereadingonepiecepodcast.buzzsprout.com or on our YouTube channel at We Are Reading One Piece. This is a spoiler-free channel up to where we record the podcast. So if you're new to the series, you can visit the channel there. You can also find me and this podcast on my YouTube channel at Pirate King Codex or various One Piece content. Next episode, we'll be discussing Volume 36, The Ninth Justice. I've been Joel, and I've been joined by Evan. Thanks for listening. And Cody. I'm Cody. Thanks for having me. (laughs) All right. Well, be sure to bring along all of your hopes and dreams, and we'll see you on the next episode.